All right, so I just completed a 21 minute run, 2.3 miles threshold run, and I wanted to post a follow up to my lactate threshold video, and then also follow that up with a video on training effect. This run that I just finished, which was a relatively short run, 21 minutes with a warm up, and only 2.3 miles, had a training effect of 4.5, which is a highly improving training effect. So, training effect. I want to cover what is training effect, how I use training effect in my training program, and what the various um, zones or what the various numbers in training effect mean. All right, so if you're not familiar with First Beat, um, First Beat is a company that does heart rate analytics and they produce training metrics like training effect, VO2 max, recovery advisor, etc. And they license those technologies to various um, third parties like Garmin, Microsoft, Samsung, Sunto, um, etc. So when you see features on a Garmin watch that sound a lot like the features that you've seen on a Sunto watch or, um, or another um, fitness wearable. Um, the reason is they're all using first beat license technology. So this discussion today on first beat is going to center around, um, information that I've recovered from their website. Um, <clears throat> it's not independent research or anything, or my own personal knowledge. I'm largely just going to be, uh, reading and reciting information that I got from firstbeat.com specifically as it relates to training effect. So, Training effect is calculated based on a user profile and the intensity and duration of the workout. Specifically, First Beat is looking at uh, peak epoch. Epoch is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. Training effect is scaled automatically according to your individual fitness level and training hints and training history. Um, fit individuals will need harder training to further improve their fitness, and that's taken into account in the uh, training effect score. The training effect is a cumulative measurement, right? So it accumulates during the workout, starting from 1.0 and then working your way up to, um, to five. 1.0 to 1.9 would be an easy training effect. This is an easy workout for you. 2.0 to 2.9 is a maintaining training effect. So this workout helps you, helps keep you fit. 3.0 to 3.9 would be an improving workout. The, this intensive exercise improved your fitness. And then 4.0 to 4.9 is highly improving. So it's a substantial effect on your fitness. And then 5.0 or above is overreaching too much, very hard exercise, rest required, um, you know, overtraining um, is a possibility. So just kind of thinking about that, you might think, well, I want to engage, consistently engage in highly improving um, workouts, right? Because that's my goal to get, to get better fast. And you would be wrong, right? Um, <clears throat> you're, you'll, you'll want to engage in one or two improving or highly improving workouts in a, in a given week. Uh, between every improving or highly improving workout, you may want an easy or or a maintaining workout. So first beat says, you know, you're going to work out two to five times a week. Um, you're going to have two improving or highly improving workouts in there. And in between, it's going to be easier maintaining workouts. That's how, um, that's how they want you to do it. That's how they, um, feel that you get the, uh, best bang for your buck. And w when you think about it, that's true, right? So the workout I did today that I showed you a couple of minutes ago or earlier in this video, it was a highly improving workout. I had a training effect of 4.5. My recovery advisor was 49 hours. So um, two days of rest, right? What a training program might look like, uh, you might have an improving workout on a, on a Monday, a maintaining workout on a Tuesday, uh, an improving workout, let's say on a, uh, on a Wednesday, an easy workout on a Thursday and a highly improving workout on a Friday, um, followed by two days of rest and, you know, start that cycle all over again. As you progress in your fitness training effect, uh, takes into account your particular fitness level and your training history, right? Um, it's, it's very specific and it's very personalized to you and to your training history, um, to, to give you those numbers. So a highly improving workout for me 
probably won't look anything like a highly improving workout for you um, just because of the the variable nature of it or the highly individualized nature of uh, a highly improving workout or or of training effect i guess more accurately so just kind of looking at the workout that i did today let's go into my training history details of it i uh it was at 251 today 2.32 um, miles 21 and a half minutes a 917 pace 300 calories this was a threshold run for me so i was trying to uh maintain my heart rate at or below 171 beats per minute uh, the training effect was 4.5 and when i started my workout i knew i was going to stop it at for at a training effect of 4.5 unfortunately um in the garment device there's no way to set a training effect target there's you know pace distance time targets but no training effect target so i set training effect as one of the prominent um displays or prominent screens on my on my running display um so that i could keep an eye on it as i run as i ran i set a 30 minute threshold run, three minute warm up, 30 minutes at my threshold heart rate, and then a three minute cool down. Um, I hit my four and a half training effect well before I got to my 30 minutes. So then I just stopped the workout and went into my cool down. As my fitness progresses, a let's just, for example, today's run, a training effect of 4.5. As, as I get more and more fit, a training effect of 4.5 won't look anything like today's run, right? It'll be longer. It may require higher intensity. Uh, it, it, um, I may require a little bit less, uh, rest to recover from it. Um, it's very specific to where you are in your, um, in your fitness at that particular, um, point in time and your training history. 